like to introduce to you the new leadership of GYC. You are going to recognize that majority of them have been part of the old board, but there are some new ones. And so I would introduce them at this moment. When I mention your name, some of you who are part of the old, you will just move here so we will see the transitioning. Our new president is Justin McNeilius. If you can just step a little closer. Justin is a bank manager in Minnesota. He is 23 years old. This year, we have two general vice presidents. As you know, this marks a major transitioning of GYC from the key founders to a new generation of leaders. Every movement has to keep moving. And so we need some new leaders. But we do have two vice presidents to make the workload a little lighter. The first general vice president, Justin Kim. He, he was one of the three founders of GYC. He is currently a pastor in the Michigan Conference. He also serves as the program director for campus. Justin is one of the oldest in this new group. He is 27 years old. Another of our vice presidents is Luke Whiting. Luke. Luke is a new graduate from Southern Adventist University. Luke is not old. He is 22 years old. Uh, he has served as our programming director. He had been in charge of all the programming. Our new executive secretary is Amy Shepard. Amy, she is a new kid on the block. But she's not entirely new. All of these individuals work behind the scene. Amy is a recent graduate from the University of Michigan. She is also currently a campus missionary. Amy is, I think, 23 years old. She just became 23 years old. Our treasurer is the father of the group. His name is Tom Owedi. Tom? Uh, <laughs> Tom has skewed the statistics of the group. Uh, he is 38 years old. We needed someone in their ranks to keep them in check. <laughs> Tom graduated from Western Michigan University. He is a senior financial analyst for Kellogg Corporation. He remains as our treasurer. The new VP for programming is Phil Mills, a newcomer on the block. Phil recently graduated from Southern. Phil is now going to serve as an intern evangelist in the Michigan Conference. He will be in charge of all the programming that takes place here. The new VP for communication is Katie Yeager. Katie, you are another kid on the block. She is one of the youngest in the group. She is 21. Kerry is a Bible worker in Minnesota, and she is going to be in charge of all the communications with the public relations. Kerry, welcome to the group. Uh, we also have new VP for evangelism. Our new president used to hold that position, but the new VP for evangelism is Chelsea Jordan. Chelsea, another kid on the block, but you know her already. A vibrant, very vivacious. Uh, she is a Bible worker in the Florida Conference. She will be taking us to a new level of evangelistic excellence. Welcome, Katie. Uh, we also have the new VP for resources, Siku Klatswayo. Siku uh, was a graduate from Wesley College, the Women's Harvard in Boston. She uh, served as a campus missionary and currently is part of the staff of campus to prepare a new generation, the graduates, the young professionals, which is the direction we want to take it. She will be in charge of developing resources for GYC. Uh, I don't know, Siku, your age. I think you are 24, I know. Okay. Uh, VP for logistics. The role being played uh, currently, or which had been played by Alistair before his health situation, is occupied now by Alana Smith. Elena is a new kid on the block, but she's exceptionally capable. She's an accountant in the British Columbia in Canada. 
those of you who've passed through the logistics area, you saw this year everything went smoothly. She has been uh, behind the scene working. And of course, the one who networks with all of you, Yamil Rosario. Yamil is also another little grandfather in the group. Uh, he is 27 years old. He is the director for Radiant Life. Friends, these are the new leaders of GYC. The board of directors has full confidence in them. They have already been tested. Most of them were working behind the scene even though their names never flashed on the television screens. They are hardworking, they are exceptionally godly and brilliant. They represent the ideals of GYC. And now it is our privilege to introduce them to you and give them a charge. Because accepting a responsibility in GYC is not a position for which one can boast. It is a trust reposed in us by the Lord. This is a generation of young people who have dedicated themselves to lead their fellow young people higher, higher to the higher ground. And so I will be giving them a charge. Afterwards, we'll give the president our new president an opportunity to accept the new commitment and then Elder Gallimore would pray for them. In your brochure, Israel Ramos, one of the founders of GYC and the past president, made a comment on page four which I would like to call your attention to. He mentioned that the venue here in Minneapolis reminds us of the 1888 general conference session which resulted in a great trial for the church and has been the subject of much discussion and confusion. Our organization, he says, that's GYC, embarks upon new changes in leadership, growth, and relationships, changes that are promising but nevertheless cause uncertainty and even anxiety. Any time there is a transitioning process, people are afraid. They are wondering what does the future hold. We just had a change of name to Generation of Youth for Christ from the old one. Now we have a change of leadership. There is uncertainty. As I look at the profile of these new leaders, my message to you is you represent a new breed who are taking GYC to a higher level. You have an advantage the older generation didn't have. I did a little check on the statistics just of their age. The founders of GYC were very young. When you look at their ages when they started, the average age was 20. Some of them were below that age. The new leadership, your average age is almost 27, thanks to um, <laughs> Tom who has queued it up, you know. <laughs> but the fact is, you are a much older group of leaders. That can be a plus because you come with wisdom and experience but it can also be a setback because you might trust in your wisdom the first generation of gyc leaders none of them had a job they were all students all but two of you have jobs that can be an advantage it can be a disadvantage the first generation of gyc leaders none was married so they had a single purpose commitment to this cause. Some of you are married, even with children. None had theological training, the first generation. Many of you are well trained. The first generation, a majority of them were from public universities. Institutions who were used to radical commitment from the hippie movement, animal rights, political activism, they wanted to take Adventism to its logical and radical commitment to our faith. The new generation, a majority of you grew up in the Adventist system. It is a plus, it can also be a distraction. The old generation, almost all of them were minorities. Substantial number of them were Asians, Hispanics, Blacks, White. But they were willing to take this movement beyond the racial stereotypes that have been institutionalized in the church. 
your new generation represent a much more nuanced expression but we believe you are committed to the ideals of gyc the old generation risk being misunderstood being misinterpreted being underestimated because they were nobodies they risked opposition internal opposition and external opposition and yet they prevailed what enabled them to prevail was a set of ideals and a vision they captured an understanding that god is preparing a people in this generation and they as young people will be fitting examples of that and they were committed to rallying them all together their highest loyalty was to god not an individual or an organization in our age of compromises where political expediency trumps biblical conviction, you, the new leaders, have been called to a new level of excellence, a new commitment the church has never seen before. Upon you has been bestowed a trust, a legacy that shouldn't be thrown away. GYC has arrived as it occurs because it is now embraced by a wide number of people. The church has embraced you. You are receiving publicity all over. This can be a blessing. It can also be a distraction. My challenge to you is, do not fear man, fear God. Let not your loyalty be to individuals or organizations. Your highest loyalty is not to any conference, Michigan Conference, Campus, ASI, or any organizations. It is not to any individual, friends, parents, or anyone. Your highest loyalty is to the Lord. And whatever you do, it better be biblical. It better be life-transforming. It better be mission-driven. God holds you accountable. If you throw this trust away in any compromises of any sort, as we speak right now, one of the old leaders is dying, battling for his life. Many have paid a price for GYC. Let it not be on your record that under your watch, you betrayed a trust. Many young people all over the world are looking up to you. We cannot allow this to fail. It is a tremendous responsibility. But the Lord trusts you. Our young people trust you. We as a board trust you. And we believe you will take GYC to higher ground. But for this to happen, you must first be changed. You cannot go on evangelism unless you are first transformed. If there is time, I would have read to you Ezra 7 verse 10. Ezra purposed in his heart to seek the Lord, to practice it, and then proclaim it. Before you proclaim, you must first practice. But before you practice, you must know. Which means you must be committed to serious biblical studies. What marked the first generation? They, were, they studied the Bible. They were godly. They loved the spirit of prophecy. And they were committed to biblical Adventism. And they were committed to the mission of the church. This is a challenge you face. It is an opportunity. And we believe you respond to this challenge. We know the Lord would help you. A lot is at stake here in Minneapolis. 1888 could have been a turning point we lost it again in 18 in this year in minneapolis we have another opportunity you represent that opportunity let it not happen under your watch that a trust for which people have paid a price and for which people are dying will be thrown away i think it is fitting to give our new president justin to stand on behalf of your people and let the world know that you are willing to accept this trust. Go ahead.
I would say it's with a, uh, a humble heart that uh, certainly we're not adequate people. I thought of something that I did want to tell you, so if you'll bear with me for just a few seconds. We, uh, we got together as a uh, executive committee a couple of uh, nights ago. We met, and uh, I, I was feeling like it shouldn't be me as the uh, president, feeling very inadequate. And uh, I asked each of the executive committee why they uh, wanted to do it. And a common thread amongst all of them they didn't feel adequate. And as I says, I started to think about uh, Moses in the Old Testament. Moses was a uh, leader. God picked him. He said, you're going to lead my people. And Moses started listing all these reasons why it shouldn't be him. All these reasons why he was inadequate. All these reasons why he couldn't do it. And I just started thinking, you know, as Moses went through his leadership, many times he reached positions in his life where humanly it was impossible. Where they would come to the Red Sea, see this huge sea, and humanly they could not cross the sea. But I can just picture Moses sitting down with his executive committee and praying and saying, you know what, Lord, we can't do this, but through you we can do it. And each time Moses was leading them, he came to places in their life. Humanly, it was impossible. There's going to be times when we come up to situations. Humanly, in our minds, it'll seem impossible. We're just young people. Even you, Tom. Young people. I'm 23. Most of you are in your 20s. There's no reason why we should be up here leading such a God-driven organization, except for that we'll be on our knees praying. And I think Dr. Pippum... We accept this challenge. We accept it not because we want to, to look successful in the minds of the attendees, not because we want to be on 3ABN or see our name flash across the screen or, or have the fancy title of vice president around our, our neck as we walk around, but rather we accept it because we want to see young people finish the work in our lifetime. Preferably, we want to see young people finish the work while we're still young so that most of us won't reach the age of Tom. <laughs> I, we also have a gift for the old executive committee. Maybe if you meal and Alani, you'll go back and get it. There's a box. You'll find it back there. I spoke with uh, Elder Ratsar yesterday, and I, I asked him, you know, what would your, be your counsel for me? What would be your counsel for the GYC leadership? And he told me three points. And I won't tell you the, the, uh, all three points, but I'll skip rather to the third point. The third point he said was keep the old leadership close. See, friends, these people up here have done an amazing job. When I was uh, a younger person, in my mind was Israel Ramos, this, this great leader, this, this president of GYC, a, a almost non-human person. But in Sacramento, you and I sat down, we talked about what we could do for evangelism, and I could see in, in the very being of him that there was a passion for evangelism, a passion for getting young people involved, for getting young people to finish the work. Israel, it's a, it, you'll be extremely hard steps to follow. Obviously something that can only be done in prayer. And on behalf of this executive committee, we extremely thank you for what you've done. It was, it was a, it's easy now. We don't have to go and, and take a bold step to say, hey, if this doesn't work, our parents have to pay $50,000. You guys took the first steps, but we'll take bold steps because of what you did. And we thank you for that. So we have a little gift for you. Here, you get it over here to him. <laughs> Israel, this is a globe. Because the gospel has to go to all the world, first of all. And GYC carries 
GYC holds that in their hearts and wants to see that fulfilled. On the bottom is our mission statement, and I'd just like to read it to you. It says, To Israel Ramos from GYC, to one who has the integrity of Daniel, the humility of Mary, the leadership of Nehemiah, the passion for evangelism as Paul, and the love for humanity as Jesus. Thank you. Truly, Israel, we are very thankful of you. We don't want any of you to cry. It's a privilege. But I think it is fitting to dedicate these new leaders in the Lord's hands. Elder Galimo, you are our pastor. You have modeled for us what true leadership is all about. And we think the young people would appreciate you dedicating them to this task. This is a, a moment to humble ourselves before the Lord, and I'd invite you to kneel with me, if you would, please. Our Heavenly Father, surrounded by 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands of personal attendants, before whom the unfallen worlds are gathered in the final judgment and the final scenes of earth's history, they are watching and participating. Father, I, I want to ask your forgiveness for leaders like myself who've been too slow. We've been here in this world a long time since you've given us this message. And we are sorry, Heavenly Father, for our preoccupation with the things of this world. We're sorry that its charms, seeming charms, have held us. But in your gracious love, you, you had pity upon us. You saw our frailty. And so you inspire these precious young people with a vision that came right from your throne. You started it, Heavenly Father, in that place where the pioneers of this church sleep, waiting for the morning of the resurrection. And now we stand, Heavenly Father, surrounded by all kinds of electronic technology, by all kinds of flashes, by the temptations of sin honed to perfection. And we are 6,000 years from the creation and very weak. We love our young people, Father. They're precious. And this new group of leaders are precious. But may they ever understand their great need of dependence upon you. And that they can absolutely do nothing without you. While they are vi very valuable because you sent all of what you had to redeem us. I pray that they will look to you and to your face. Lord, do not delay. Have pity upon your church and your churches. Resurrect us, an army of young people, rightly trained from every part of the world that will finish the work. Use GYC as the catalyst. Father, open to them new visions, your visions. Let them not follow their plans, but your plans. And then lastly, Father, I plead, pour out your Holy Spirit on them. Baptize them not once, not twice, but every day baptize them. And I pray that you rebuke the devil and his evil angels who've laid every snare that hell can figure out. And that you will surround them with mighty angels, that you will rescue them from temptation and deliver them from evil. And use them to your glory and to honor. And when they look back, May they see your smile because you have brought, they have brought by your grace, 
great glory to your name. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, who deserves a church in the end of time beyond anything we can grasp, every stripe, every puncture of the crown of thorns, every nail into his flesh, all the mockery, all the pain that you and he endured in the darkness of the cross, now give him, Father, the church he deserves. And they use these young people as the catalyst for that gift. In Jesus' name, amen.